Welcome everyone to this webinar on principles of interaction design. I'm Uman Goel, working as a software consultant at Noldus. So before starting, let's learn a bit about Noldus. Noldus is a team of passionate technologists with a product mindset who work along with businesses to deliver solution at a speed of competitive advantage. Our main capabilities are around reactive products, IoT, microservices and API, data science, data engineering and DevOps. We also have a strategic partnership with Databricks, Lightbend, Confluent, and many more to deliver more to our clients. So uh, the agenda for today's webinar is uh, first we'll look into what is interaction design, and then we'll understand humans and the psychology of everyday actions. And then we'll learn about the actual principles of interaction design. And, uh, and then I'll give you a brief introduction about the human-centered design process. So for this uh, webinar, I've taken inspiration and reference from the book, The Design of Everyday Things by Don Norman. So Don Norman is one of the leading thinkers in human-centered design and principles that he writes in his book are a required reading for every, design, every design, product designer. In his classic book, Don Norman talks about the design of everyday objects like doors, stoves, thermostat, and uh, et cetera, et cetera. And then he applies some universal design principles according to him to provide better product design solutions. So I'll be using these principles that he talks about in his book, but strictly on technology products and how we can use principles to make our uh, applications more usable. So what is interaction design? The, the discipline in which the focus is upon how people interact with the technology. The goal is to enhance people's understanding of what can be done, what is happening, and what just occurred. Interaction design draws upon the principle of psychology, design, and emotions to ensure a positive experience. So what is interaction design? Is Interaction design is just a better of, it's just a way of communicating to the user through the product as to what, how to use the product and how, how, what should be done with the product to achieve the goal that a user has in mind. So a user experience can be a feature that should be added on a product or application to make the user experience better. Uh, user interface design can be designing that feature uh, be more beautiful and uh, colorful and stylish interaction design is making sure that that feature is usable and actually ready to use by a human so understanding humans so why do we need to understand humans so because it's simple the things that we are being uh, that are being developed and designed are meant to be used by humans and without uh, understanding of humans these are to be faulty difficult to use and understand so a couple of points that uh, Don Norman strictly tells every product uh, developer or designer to keep always keep in mind is that human thoughts are mostly subconscious. Humans don't even know why they choose the things they choose and why they act out in such a way that they act because it happens in split second. Uh, and we are not aware of it. It, it acts upon from the past experience that we have and the things that we have learned over time. So human, so designer or product uh, designer should always leverage these subconscious behavior of humans and design the systems accordingly. We cannot always trust the humans to act in conscious way. Second point is to make errors is to human. To, uh, it's a very, it's a very common sense thing that we as humans are make mistakes and we are creative human beings. We are not logically programmed by someone to act in certain way. We always find creative ways to do something which sometimes lead to errors. So the goal of designer is to consider this fact and, and always design the systems accordingly and not the blame the system for, uh, for not the, and not blame the humans or the users for acting in the wrong way rather than uh, make systems better so that these errors can be reduced. The psychology of everyday actions. 
So whenever we are trying to perform a, a task or a, achieve a goal, we are uh, fro through a product. We are always faced by two divisions or two gulfs: the gulf of ex execution and the gulf of evaluation. The gulf of ex execution is where we figure out uh, what, how a thing operates, or how a product operates, and what actually can be done. And uh, gulf of evaluation, where uh, humans figure out what actually happened, uh, considering what actions they have done and what are the results of those actions. So the role of the, of the designer is to bridge this gap. So as I, as I told you earlier, human thoughts are mostly subconscious and we'll break it down into steps uh, for, get, for, for getting a clear understanding of what actually goes or goes what actually happens step by step when we perform a task. So suppose I take example of uh, we want to turn on a television. So first we'll we'll plan how an actual how actually a television is turned on. So we need a remote. We need to find the remote and we need to press a button to turn television on. And then we specify as to which remote is for uh, this TV and which button should be uh, pressed to turn on the television. And then once we have specified our plan and then we perform. And then after performing the act, the, and after performing, we perceive as what actually is happening. So when we press the button to turn on the TV, there might be a beep sound or there might be a flash on the screen. And then we interpret those, uh, those results as is is it the required result uh, that and what and then we interpret that whether it's opening or getting closed and then we compare with the expectations of or the goal that we have in mind and if it and that expectation is not met then the cycle repeats until unless we get the desired result so the types of knowledge that we use while uh, performing a task is a knowledge in the head and the knowledge in the world Knowledge in the head is the things that someone taught us and we have memorized it. So for example, we have uh, somebody must have taught us that the remote is used for turning on the television and, uh, this, uh, and the power button is for opening the TV. And uh, knowledge in the world will be us recognizing that what by matching the logo on the remote and the TV, uh, and figuring out what which remote is for television and then pressing a button. Uh, so why did we press the button? Because the buttons are designed in such a way that it can only be pressed. We cannot slide or swipe or uh, pull a button. We can only press a button. So uh, the first principle of uh, interaction design is the discoverability uh, of visibility. So is it possible to uh, determine what action is possible and what is the current state of device? Visibility is a basic principle that more visible an element is, the more likely the user will know about them and how to use them. Equally important is the opposite. When something is out of sight, it's difficult to know about and use. So it's a very, a very, uh, it's, it's, it's really common sense that we need to make our features more discoverable and more visible to the user so that humans get uh, users get a clear understanding of uh, a clear vision or a clear visibility of what are the features and what they can actually do uh, a, a example that we uh, that uh, at, at we see of discoverability uh, being used uh, largely and in our current applications are the tab bar menus and the trade-off between the hamburger menus and tab bar menus. So now Facebook and uh, I've given a couple examples here of Facebook and Zomato. So they've used tab bar menus to make their all the key experiences and key features more visible or the navigation links clearly visible instead of using a set hamburger menu, which is on corner and on in a left corner, which is totally out of sight and less likely to be used. So why are they bad? Because what is out of sight 
is out of mind. As a result, when you use hamburger menus for your primary navigation, most of your features end up being unnoticed and hence unused. So uh, uh, when are side menus good? So in the applications which have a single focus in mind, so like Uber, uh, the only, uh, we, we frequently use Uber to check out the, to figure out, to discover the cabs around us and uh, book a cab and have a ride. So you, uh, so a, a tab bar menu is a secondary thing. Uh, is a, so navigation link to other features is a secondary feature and not the main feature. The main feature is booking a cab. So using hamburg sidebar menus in this case is very grateful because the key experience is booking a cab. Similarly, in uh, uh, we can use sidebar menus for giving secondary navigation options for or quick filtering options that like in Mintra, they have shifted all their main contents, uh, main navigation links onto the main page in the tab bar menu and given a sidebar menu also to provide quick filtering options and other navigation links. So next principle is affordances and signifiers. So what is affordances? Affordances refers to an attribute of an object that allows people to know how to use it. Essentially, to afford means to give a clue. The physical button on a mouse gives a clue that it can be clicked and perform an action. Perform an action. When object has a strong affordances, it's very clear how to use it. So affordances are uh, properties of an object that gives an indication to the user of what action is possible with the product. So for example, I'll give you an example of uh, a button. It's, it has a property of being pushed. So without anybody telling us or teaching us what to put on, we can only push it. A handle gives an affordances to hold a knob or to rotate. So a very simple example for that is the doors. So we often get confused while uh, using doors in our everyday life, but uh, it is supposed to be pull or push. Similarly, this door with a vertical rod uh, or handle uh, at the center of the door. Uh, so what do you guys think that whether we should pull or push this door? Exactly. You cannot know that uh, whether it is push or a pull because it can be either. So this, uh, it, it's, a, it's a sign of bad interaction between the door and the humans. Now this example with a, a door with a metal plate in the, in the center. So, so will you push or pull this door? You can only push this door because it has no handles or anything else. We can only push a door with a metal plate. So this is a very good example of using affordances to guide a certain behavior. So um, more on affordances are the button that we can push, switch that we can flip it, and a knob that we can rotate. So nobody taught us these things. We, by looking at the object, we know that we can what actions to be performed. So how we can use affordances in our technology products? So a, a phone has a uh, also our, phone, um, our smartphones are lightweight and small so we can hold it. It fits in our pocket so we can carry it. And uh, it has a glass screen so we can tap and swipe or slide our fingers on it. And uh, laptop, it can fold so we can carry it and it has buttons on its keyboard so we can press them. It has a trackpad so to slide the fingers in the flat bottom so we can keep it on laps or table. So these are the affordances that always exist on these products. Now, whether our application is running on it or not, these affordances will always be there, irrespective of any application or anything. These affordances are always there on these products. So how can we guide the behavior? Here comes into play signifiers. So signifiers in, in a general term means where the action is supposed to take place. 
of so affordances uh, affordances is what actions to take play what actions to you to, to to perform and signifiers tells us where the action should be take should taking place so it uh, so it, it's a, it's basically a perceivable indicator that communicates the appropriate behavior to the person so example uh, on the on the left we have an image of a, a box that has a box inside that we can slide so it is an affordance of slide but in which direction or to where to uh, slide the box is signified by the ribbon on the side a chair uh, here uh, has affordance as a flat surface on top and we can sit on it but in which direction is signified by the curve on on on, on one edge so how we can use signifiers in our applications is by using labels appropriate labels appropriate uh, icons and symbols and illustrations that tells the user but where to tap or what actually to uh, perform so add having uh, additional uh, minus symbols to give uh, indication of to remove or add three horizontal lines in parallel give indication that it is draggable uh, a row is draggable uh, a button like uh, on on an on and off button like this gives an indication that we can swipe on right and left to turn on or off and similarly in iPhones earlier we used to have the slide to unlock signifier which uh, now we have learned and we require it no more but it, in earlier it was really helpful to guide and to get a skilled behavior out of users also we always don't need to have labels or arrows and uh, icons to guide the behavior we can design our interface in such a way that it gives clear signification as to what action can be done in this case we have a cascade of cards one behind another which gives a clear indication that we can swipe down in on the cards and uh, check for more another signifiers are our scroll bar which signifies that we can scroll the page and uh, the pagination that we can go right or left it also signifies that how much content is left accidentally mapping so another principle is of interaction is mapping mapping is the relationship between controls and effect the idea that with a good design the control to something will closely resemble what they affect so meaning that we can design or lay out our controls in such a way that it clearly indicates to the user that what this control will will automatically trigger without us giving uh, instructions or labels to the user so in this case so example given below uh, of a, of a gas stove with four burners so first on the left we have the usual stove that we have in our homes with the horizontal layout with the with the, in a linear line that we have knobs and it's, it's difficult and it's almost impossible to know just by looking at the knobs that which part of the which which burner it actually is used to control Simil uh, and and on contrary we have the right image which is a good mapping and without anyone telling us what knob is for which burner we automatically know by looking at the mapping between the knobs and the placement of the burner so mapping can be of different uh, we can use mapping of different types like special similarities so which uses the actual the physical layout of an of between some things and mapping them so for so example we are designing an application that is supposed to be an iot home automation system or a office a controlling for uh, office uh, iot's when we can uh, design our interfaces in such a way that it resembles the floor plan of the of our homes and it, it it is it will clearly indicate the user logically at how we can 
which part of the this control affects what part of our home and also the example of uh, special mapping is the scroll bar that clearly is mapped with the with the amount of web page or the page that is being viewed currently and out of the out of all the other contents and it indicates where we actually are on the page and when we go up and down it moves with us so next is the conceptual and metaphorical similarities uh, so we while designing our interfaces we can also map with already with the all with the existing concepts that users already have in mind so we know cool and green are uh, so we know that blue and green are indicates safe and uh, cool and um, red and uh, red in, in signifies danger or hot so we can use these uh, concepts uh, to guide the user as to which in in which direction to swipe or turn the slider to increase or decrease the value of something similarly in iPhones we have this this controller for increasing and decreasing the brightness and increasing and decreasing the volume button uh, volume uh, sound which is clearly mapped with the concept that up is increase and down is decrease without any using any labels we already know that swiping up will increase the brightness and swiping down will reduce it so next is the behavioral similarity uh, so behavior similarity is mapping with the existing behavior that user user already have and leveraging that so earlier when smart watches were uh, were introduced to the world there were a, there was a button that we need to press uh, to turn on the display like we have in our smartphones and that got changed when uh, when we had the feature of race to wake which is clearly mapped with the with the action of us turning our wrist and checking time and the display automatically turns on which omits the step of uh, extra step of clicking a button to turn on the display another example that i find in my personal experience is the uh, is an app water drink reminder that i use every day that reminds me to drink water after an hour so it it has a notification tune that is mapped with the water pour sound when we pour, pour water in the glass so whenever i hear this sound i automatically know that what what the notification is for and i don't even need to check the phone i just drink water so another example a brilliant example of behavioral similarity or uh, using uh, behavioral similarity mapping is an apple introduced the natural scrolling to his mac os in uh, 2011 this rewards the familiar pattern of scrolling the web page down by holding our fingers on the trackpad and dragging them down downward instead this was reversed such that you would drag your fingers up on the trackpad to scroll down so currently we, uh, this this reversal was clearly mapped with the way that we use our phones and ipads so earlier there was uh, the part the sliding the scrolling feature was controlled in in reverse pattern which apple changed and which was clearly mapped with the way we used our smartphones and tablets so it is more naturally mapped it's, it's also more naturally mapped to the how we push uh, how we push a piece of paper kept on a table and uh, this was a new behavior created by the smartphones so next up is constraint so we have used discoverability affordances signifiers and mapping to let the user know that what actions are possible and what they will actually control with this comes the principle of constraint as which talks about limiting the range of interaction the possibilities of user to simplify the interface and guide the user to appropriate action in this uh, this is a case where constraints are clarifying since they make it clear as what can be done by omitting other options the limitless possibilities often leave the user confused 
so when user may get overwhelmed by the uh, when we have too many options available also which is a sign of bad interaction between product and user so type of uh, constraints can be logical constraint uh, which uses the reasoning to determine alternatives so whenever we have whenever we are viewing something on our tab, on our smartphones or on our laptops and we cannot view the whole content and we see it getting cut due to the constraint of small screen we automatically swipe right or uh, down or swipe up to check more content because we know that there is more and it is cons and and the small screen is obstructing our view so it also mapped so mapping is also a way of logical constraint physical constraint so this is a very uh, common and we use it on our everyday day, every day uh, while designing user interfaces and making sure that what features are not usable at the moment by making them look grayish in color or disabled appearance and uh, making our cursors turn into pointers regular pointers and not making them clickable so this is the form of physical constraints that we use uh, next is the cultural constraint the cultural constraints are the conventions shared by a cultural group so uh, there are certain norms that we already use in society as i talked in uh, in the previous slides that green is positive and red is danger and up is increase so we are constrained to think in such a way a designer can use this constraint to guide the user for to guide the appropriate behavior by the user so another example of when there are no constraint is the voice assistant uh, interfaces which feels more natural as when that we can use a natural language to control the interfaces but with this comes the lack of, of constraint the limitless possibilities of what you can actually say because potentially you can say anything to an interface but will that result in a fruitful result fruitful goal may not be 100 percent true so it also becomes very hard to know that what actual queries does the platform supports so we often find these kind of suggestions by the uh, assistant of to guide the user behavior so uh, till now we have talked about the gulf of execution all the principles that i've talked previously was so that the user can plan their action and figure out what how the product actually operates or how the application actually operates now we need to give the user feedback uh, on 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 the basis of their actions and feedback is the principle of making it clear to the user what action has been taken and what has been accomplished many forms of feedback exist in the interaction design including visual tactile and audio and more so we are already using some kind of feedbacks in our products currently which uh, are like showing the error message or showing the warning message for uh, infilled for, for incomplete forms or uh, error messages that might be from server but the key is to design the experiences to never leave the user guessing about what actions they have taken and the consequence of uh, doing so so this is the key to like never leave the user guessing of what action they have done which i'll explain in the next few slides so why feedback is important it gives the user a reassurance uh, when it indicate even even if it indicates the a negative result so it it gives a feeling of uh, a sense of control to the user that they have they actually understand the system and they are the, the the product that using is actually responsive when even when there is a, a microsecond of delay in providing the feedback it can be an unsettling experience and make the user anxious and the user can try to perform repeated tasks 
or hit a, a navigation link twice or submit a form twice whenever we are whenever it doesn't get a proper feedback so whenever we give a feedback there is a uh, knowledge of the result and uh, the expectation of the user are resolved and that leads to a development of a skilled behavior the example of uh, feedback is the google chrome that does a great job of when we when the loading pages so as soon as you hit a url in the chrome browser that a loading spinner starts spinning and as soon as the page is about to load it gets faster so it's a very simple and effective way of feedbacks that i was talking about another type of feedback uh, uh, what we must provide to the user is when we have feature that is used to select mode and we should make it very clear as to what the mode is selected to reduce the errors so example is the alarm clock that we use every day to set alarms and it has two modes am or pm and so by showing uh, and most of the by the way most of the people out there get confused and they have to reassure the sims, sims themselves that they have used am or pm and uh, when the alarm will actually go off so by showing a picture or a background image of the of the atmosphere of the day of the sun or on the moon that at the point of when at the point of the alarm will go off will make it clear to the user that they, that they have selected am or pm and uh, which is all and this is also very naturally mapped with our environment so this was uh, so now is the really important uh, example that i was talking about of a continuous feedback to the user which is provided by google material design patterns uh, so i have a small video that we can check so observe this video very carefully so a mode was selected and it clearly signified that it was delayed or on on time so now observe carefully whenever a user taps or uh, clicks somewhere there is a ripple effect which uh, which gives a feedback to the user that what uh, what uh, icon or what row they have selected and which will result in the in the coming page or the or the window whenever a new window pops up it clearly gives a feedback uh, that it is coming from which part of the interface and it it is extending what feature so there was a full continuous information about the action and the result so it it or it uh, you might be feeling a sense of control that you might have in such products that you must always keep this in mind to give user uh, immediate feedback because even a microsecond can lead to an unsettling experience now we have uh, given the user proper feedbacks and they now have a skilled behavior now we need to assure the users that what they have they have learned is is the correct form and is the correct way of operating so we need to make our user interfaces consistent as possible so consistency refers to the having similar operations and similar elements for achieving similar tasks by leveraging consistent elements throughout your entire experiences you make your experience far easier to use 
this consistency is important not only within your interface but across the many interfaces that user are using across devices Uh, so the consistency helps in drastically reducing human slips and mistakes because whenever so uh, so if 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 human if users already know if if you, if your interface is consistent and the user have a, have already an understanding of your product then they will not repeat the mistakes that they might have com committed earlier and they will keep on uh, using their your product the same way that resulted that gave them the desired results so human will subconsciously will be tempted to do the last set of actions that resulted the desired result according to the feedback that was provided by the product back then so this increases the usability and eliminates confusion uh, and invokes an emotional response a feeling of sense of uh, understanding and a control of product so this example of poor consistency when we use so many different type of styles in our interfaces to for similar up, 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 for for similar actions and similar features so this is, should not be done it results in a bad interaction bad communication from the product so for for the best way to drive consistency on your products is using google's material design guidelines and ios interaction guidelines when designing your applications i highly highly recommend these guidelines so now we have uh, learned about all the principles of the interaction design and now i'll give you a brief introduction a brief overview of human centered design principles and the processes that we should follow so that we make sure that we are using the interaction design principles on in our product so whenever we uh, so first is the that we should under, understand and address core problems so solve the fundamental underlying issues not the symptoms it's recommended starting with the field studies and observations of the actual practice and ask why each uh, at each issue when the answer is human error keep going why did the error occur what could be what could we have done to prevent it to prevent it so uh, we should always ask so when, if you have, if you are seeing less visits on our or some on our some page or with less you used feature that we actually thought would be really great so we should ask ourselves why is this happening or why uh, and keep on asking why until we find a root cause and the root cause is human error that we should not Uh, stop there we should go even beyond that and ask why what led to the, this human error be people centered people centered means starting with the needs and abilities of people it means considering all the people who are involved taking account of the history the culture the beliefs and the environment of the community the best way to do so is to let those who live in the community provide the answers so uh, interviewing people and understanding their actual needs the what they actually want and drive deriving your product development from there and not from the technology perspectives that if uh, it might be possible to build really cool things like foldable phones for example right now but is it actually used by humans it's like is it actually providing something valuable to the people like foldable phones does not provide an actual value to the end user it's just cool and but not usable right now uh third is uh, is an activity centered system approach so activity means uh, so i give i'll explain you by giving an example so design must focus upon the entire activity and under, under consideration not just an isolated components so for example buying sh buying a clo buying clothes is an activity and getting into your car traveling to the mall entering the store selecting clothes and then purchasing them is the individual components so we should whenever we are designing for any problem we should take the whole activity under consideration 
and not just the individual component. And the last and the fourth is the rapid iteration and prototyping and testing. So whenever we come up with some something improvement or innovation, uh, they are probably imperfect or incomplete or too big, difficult or expensive. It uh, we cannot get. It is not possible or very. It is highly unlikely to get the things right for the first time. So we need to prototype fast and test fast with the actual user and the actual target audience, and then reiterate on those findings and then making new prototypes and testing them until we have the final product ready to be shipped. So these are the references um, that I used and uh, useful resources and links that I think you should have a look. Uh, and thank you so much for joining me in this for in this webinar. And I hope you learned something new today that you can use in your projects and products and uh, have a better and usable and more products and more usable products than you have right now and increase your customer base and user experience. Thank you so much.